few years ago, never mind how long exactly, I was waiting to go into an event to see the new iPhone, to hear Apple's pitch, to go hands on, the whole thing. And behind me, this person was just blustering away about how they were gonna absolutely trash it, wreck it in their review, sight unseen. This iPhone that Apple hadn't even announced yet, that none of us had laid so much as a finger on yet, whatever it turned out to be, what it absolutely was never gonna be for them was a worthy upgrade, they decided. And wouldn't you know it, two weeks later, that's exactly what they did. Trash it, wreck it, and that's really stuck with me, haunted me, I think about it a lot. That iPhone ended up being the second best-selling phone of that year that made me understand that Apple and the whole entire market knew something that many of us in the tech bubble forget just so damn always, that it's not about getting a new hot phone in every three to five weeks and still somehow finding them all just various shades of boring. It's about getting a single new phone, maybe every three to five years, and sometimes very much wanting that phone to be familiar. And that seems to be Apple's strategy, just writ large for all their lowest priced, highest value products, from the MacBook Air to the iPad nothing to the iPhone SE, the device you know, maybe even love, just a new version, an updated version that you can keep on loving for a few or many more years to come. And that's exactly what this new iPhone SE is. Classic design, classic display, classic home button. For every one of us still on an iPhone 6 or 6S, 7 or 8, who doesn't care one whit about chunky bezels or high dynamic range or spending second one learning gesture navigation, who finds the pulse width modulation of OLED annoying or uncomfortable, considers Touch ID a feature and not a bug, and is 100% fine with a single camera system being more than capable enough to capture some memories, scan some docs, maybe even tick some talks. So does that mean you or somebody you care about should buy the new iPhone SE rather than say take a leap to an iPhone 13 or maybe a tiny little step to an iPhone 11? Well, I've been using the new midnight version on loan from Apple for the last four days. And I'm here to tell you there are definitely some pros, but also some cons. And the answer is gonna come down to how you personally feel about a very few very specific things. First off, and maybe absolutely least important to you, is that there's no new design. There is tougher, more shadow resistant glass and new midnight and starlight colors to go alongside product red, but it's all in the exact same shape as the previous iPhone SE and every iPhone going back to the iPhone 6. Now, it is really hard to speculate on a pattern based on only two data points so far, but there was four years between the 2016 SE, the one based on the iPhone 5S, and the 2020 SE, the one based on the iPhone 8. And if Apple had waited four years again, maybe we would have gotten a 2024 SE based on the iPhone 12. Who knows, maybe we still will. But Apple didn't wait that long. Apple only waited two years this time, and they've kept the 2022 SE based on that same iPhone 8. And I'll get to why in a minute, but just thinking about it, I'm actually really, really happy they did. Because yes, it does give everyone who still loves that classic home button and touch ID design an updated model to keep loving for at least a generation longer, but also because it gives anyone, anyone who would have paid full price for a 2020 iPhone SE this year and gotten iOS updates for three or four more years, a new 2020 model for the same price, almost the same price, more on that in a minute as well, but one that'll now get those updates for the full five or six years we've come to expect from Apple. And that's terrific, fantastic, shui, because not everybody buys bread every day, but any day you do buy bread, you deserve, you expect it to be fresh, not already racing that expiry date. And I feel the exact same way about consumer electronics. If I, if I ran God mode over at Apple, I'd make sure every device got updated every year that a new chipset was available so that anyone buying a new device any year, that year, always got a fresh device regardless of the year because those updates really do add up. This SE is gonna get two more years of updates than the previous SE, five more years than the iPhone 8, seven more years than the iPhone 6S or OG SE, maybe more. And that is absolutely part of the whole value prop of the iPhone SE to begin with. I mean, if you bought the original SE for 400 bucks when it first came out with iOS 9 back in 2016, you got updated to iOS 15 just last fall in 2021. And all other things being equal, this $430 iPhone SE with iOS 15 in 2022 should see you through 
iOS 21 in 2027, at least, especially with the extra gigabyte of RAM, which will let you keep more and eventually more demanding apps and browser tabs alive in memory for just that much longer. But yes, 430 bucks, that wasn't a verbal typo. After holding the line last time at 400 bucks, this time Apple has raised it by $30. And my guess is it's for the same reason the regular iPhone went up by 30 bucks 18 months ago, 5G, because those Qualcomm modems just don't come cheap. But the good news is they are Qualcomm modems. So if you had an Intel modem in your previous iPhone and had issues in more remote or borderline areas, that alone could be a welcome improvement for you. But also, yeah, 5G, especially again, if you live in areas that just never had wide or fast enough 4G LTE for you. Now with 3G networks being deprecated and newer 5G ones and better bands being built out, this might finally deliver on the promise of actual mobile broadband for a ton of people spread out between the bigger towns and cities, which is also why I think Apple is doing this sort of mid-cycle refresh for the iPhone SE to begin with, to get it on 5G, to just get the whole platform onto 5G. Now, all that being said, there are a couple caveats to consider because unlike the iPhone 13, which has what's called four x four multi-input, multi-output antennas, basically support for four data streams, the iPhone SE only has two x two antennas or support for two data streams. And the best way to think about it is like lanes on a highway. The speed limit is the same, but you can move more passengers at the same time, or packets in this case. And Apple does a terrific job, painstakingly, I can only imagine, working with carriers to ensure that they get way better 5G than otherwise possible. So most people, I don't think, will even notice the difference. But if peak 5G is for some reason just critically important to you, give the iPhone 13 some thought. Also, in the United States, the iPhone 13 supports both frequency range one, which is the low and mid bands, and frequency range two, which is the high band, AKA millimeter wave. But the iPhone SE only supports FR1, the low and mid bands. And I kind of don't care, <laughs> not at all, because for years now, millimeter wave has struck me as WiMAX 2.0. What's WiMAX? Exactly. Just not anything that would end up being at all relevant to consumers, especially as AT&T and Verizon have finally been catching up with mid-band, which granted isn't as fast, but also doesn't get blocked by leaves, maybe the rain. So if you happen to live outside on top of a mailbox in the middle of a city with perfect uninterrupted line of sight to a couple or few millimeter wave antennas, and you really wanna download No Way Home in 3.2 nanoseconds, then again, by all means, give the iPhone 13 some thought. But otherwise, I think this is a hit and a half that FR1 is just gonna be the standard going forward. Also, if you care desperately about the display, especially if you wanna watch or create high dynamic range or HDR content, meaning pitch dark blacks, searing white highlights, and colors that punch you right in your eye cones, or you just want a bigger than 4.7 inch LCD screen, which you may not at all if you're coming from a regular sized iPhone 6S, 7, or 8. But if you're coming from a 5.5 inch iPhone Plus, the SE might seem comically, maybe adorably small. And yes, just be on blazing fast on the A15 Bionic chipset. But since Apple still isn't offering an SE Plus, if you want bigger, you'll have to give up on that home button and go with the full 6.1 inch screen LCD iPhone 11, or go better with the 5.4 inches of OLED on the iPhone 13 mini, or the 6.1 inches on the iPhone 13 non-mini. Like with 5G, Apple does a ton of stuff, including factory calibration and end-to-end -end color management, to make their LCD displays the best, the absolute best that they can be. And a lot of people, including a lot of pixel snobs, probably wouldn't even notice much, if any, difference, not unless they were comparing them side by side. But if you do, and it matters to you, it's just one more thing to think about. For the vast, for the vast majority of you though, it all and always comes down to battery and camera. For battery, I'm using a fresh from the box review unit, and I've only had a few days to test it, but so far, so better. Apple claims that with the new A15 chipset, which isn't just faster, but also way more efficient, the new chemistry, the slightly higher battery capacity, and the perpetual iOS updates, that it all just combines, like Voltron, to add an extra two hours of battery life over the previous same-sized iPhone models. And that means not just the last iPhone SE, but the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7 as well. Four more hours than the iPhone 6S. In other words, whatever it is you typically do on your iPhone, you should be able to typically do it for a couple or more hours longer than before. And that's nowhere nearly as long as the current 
battery champ, the iPhone 13, but it can make a real difference in getting you through those tougher days, most times all the way into the night. The camera systems though, depending on what you're upgrading from, might be more of a mixed bag. They're similar if not the same optics as the previous SE, iPhone 8, even iPhone 7, which I kinda get because Apple is working on a $430 retail budget here, like XP in a role-playing game, and they're not choosing to spend that XP on a new design or fancy new optics, but on a new chipset, an expensive new radio, and I totally get it. Overall, I think it's a way better choice than companies that do the reverse, a way better value, but it means the biggest differences will be for anyone coming from an iPhone 6S or original SE because wider aperture, optical stabilization, 4K 60 video, HD 240 slow-mo, plus seven megapixels and 1080p on the selfie cam. But for anyone upgrading from an iPhone 7 or 8, it'll mostly come down to the new image signal processor or ISP on the A15 Bionic chipset. Basically, latest generation computational photography that lets the bits do far more than the atoms would otherwise be capable of. And that means all of Apple's latest, greatest algorithms to properly capture the widest possible dynamic range, the best skin tones, movement, and textures of everything from bright outdoor shots to darker indoor exposures, but also portrait mode and portrait lighting to get that blurry, bokeh, big camera effect for headshots and the like, which the previous iPhone SE could also do, but added on top of that now, is new photographic styles which let you burn in extra contrast or vibrance or warmth, you know, for the gram, FaceTime HD over 5G. And thanks to the new neural engine, one of my absolute favorite new features in years, the legit sci-fi level live text, literally copying real words right out of the camera or photos. There's no night mode though, which debuted with the iPhone 11 back in 2019. And that's, that's just a real bummer to still be missing in 2022. Now. Maybe the optics just don't capture enough light for it to be implemented, but it's truly, truly useful. And I really miss not having it even more than I miss not having like Dolby Vision video, at least on a phone that doesn't even have a Dolby Vision display. Also, if you're coming from an iPhone Plus, you won't be getting that second telephoto camera. You still get portrait mode, so it's not a huge deal. And Apple switched from telephoto to ultra wide on the base model iPhone 11 anyway. But if you really want that telephoto, if you really wanna be able to frame and compress and punch in like that, and I do, so I absolutely feel you, you'll have to look at an iPhone Pro. And in general, if the camera really, really matters to you, if you can never go back in time and take better photos or videos of your family or your adventures, then you're gonna to wanna to look at the iPhone 13 Pro because it is absolutely best in class. But also a non-trivial almost $600 more, 700 for the Pro Max, 400 even for the standard iPhone 13 and 300 for the mini. So yeah, a lot more phone, a lot more battery, a lot more camera, but for a lot more money. And that means you really have to think about what's really, really important to you. Because some other phones in the iPhone SE price range have a lot of fancy features and so many two megapixel macro cameras, so many, but don't have anywhere nearly the build quality and certainly not the chipset power. So while some reviews will stress, for example, how well their discount silicon scrolls on day one, how well will it scroll on day 1501 in the types of apps and updates we'll all be using four years from now, if they even get updates for four years or two years or one, because price and value are very, very different things, especially when it comes down to how long the hardware lasts, how many updates you get, what kind of accessibility features are available, privacy policies, security, what kind of accessories, how important having an Apple store nearby is to you for technical support or free classes, how much is that 430 bucks over three to five years upfront or with trade-ins or on installments if you keep it the whole time or you resell it or you just hand it down because it really isn't just what you pay, it is absolutely what you get. And full disclosure, the iPhone SE is not the iPhone for me. I'm basically nerd prime. I carry an iPhone 13 Pro Max, but like I said at the beginning, it's not all about me. It's not about the tech bubble. It's about having empathy for everybody else, including many, many people in our families. The phone market isn't just broad, it's deep. And that's literally why Apple offers a range of iPhones. So there is something for everyone, including for people who just wanna buy the same type of car or watch, or yes, phone, every few years, the same, only new, only fresh. And I will admit, I have had beyond an absolute blast using the SE this week. I'm just smiling all the time. 
like a Porsche 911 fanatic who finally got a new singer. But real talk, if you need a better display or camera system or any of that day to day, maybe the extra few hundred bucks will be worth it for you over the lifespan of an iPhone 13. But if you don't wanna pay dollar one more, especially up front, or you simply prefer even love the comfort of that classic home button design, then the new iPhone SE delivers exactly what it's meant to, a classic, less expensive iPhone for you to keep on loving for many, many years to come, including a lot of features carried over from the previous SE, like Touch ID, inductive Qi charging, haptic touch, for all of that, including a bunch of comparisons with a bunch of other iPhones, check out my iPhone SE 2020 review, ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula, along with my new exclusive studio tour series where I take you through everything I use to make these videos. Episode one, camera gear, and episode two, mics and sound treatment are already live, and I'm working hard on episode three, lighting, right now. Basically everything all of you have been asking me for all the time, but would just never work at all on this channel given how YouTube works, but is exactly how Nebula is designed to work, where I and a bunch more of your favorite education creators have the absolute luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube at all, including bonus and extended versions of videos that I know, I just know the nerdiest, most hardcore of you will totally love, all ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula, and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Richie, or just click the link below. And right now, today, because you're watching this video, you can get Curiosity Stream on sale for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, way, way less than the price of your average iPhone dongle for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like SLS, NASA's mega rocket, the most powerful rocket ever built, and the story of the incredible engineering that went into building it and taking us back to the moon. It is the absolute best way to support educational creators directly and just the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off Curiosity Stream, less than 15 bucks a year, and Nebula bundled in for free, just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Richie. Click on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for more hyper detailed videos on the iPhone SE, iPhone 13, and everything coming next. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.